Can you zoom into the bottom left of that image? Now can you enhance that? Hey there, it's Jeremy from AI Expedition, and in today's video, I'll show you how you can enhance the quality of your images using AI for free, without any limits on the number of images and without needing to subscribe to any product or service. All you'll need is a Google account, which I'm sure almost everyone has. If you use Gmail, you've got a Google account, or if you use the Google Play Store on your phone, you've also got a Google account. With that out of the way, let's get to the content. You've probably all seen those TV shows where they seem to zoom into an image and enhance it over and over until they spot something, like a license plate number, or maybe even someone's face, and they use that to catch the bad guy. But is this even possible? We'll get to that in a moment. You see, images contain only a finite number of pixels. If you try to double the width and height of your image, you would need four times the number of pixels. That's because it's two times for the width and then two times again for the height. So where are those extra pixel values supposed to come from? When you enlarge an image, it usually just spaces out the original pixel values and then does some kind of averaging to fill in the missing values. But if you've ever tried this, you'll notice that your enlarged image looks kind of blurry. To get better results, people have come up with a field of study called image super resolution. And today, I'll show you how you can use two of the most well-known AI techniques for image super resolution called SR ResNet and SR GAN. This is what I used to enhance the images that you saw at the beginning of the video. These techniques effectively work by sending in some image to an AI model and then asking it to hallucinate the details of the image while upscaling it. The key point here is that the AI models are hallucinating the details to make the image look clearer. This is probably not what you want to do if you're trying to catch a criminal on CSI Miami, because after zooming in multiple times, the AI model could generate a face which looks completely different to the original bad guy. Now, while it may not be good enough to catch bad guys, we can certainly use it to enhance the quality of our own personal images. Let's take a look at how we can do that. I've written some code that's publicly available on my GitHub repository. You can access it from the link in the video description, and don't be afraid if you have absolutely no coding experience, you don't need it to make use of this project. I've made it as simple as possible so that anyone can use it. You just open up the link in the video description and it will take you to my code available on GitHub. If you do have some coding experience, you're welcome to read through the project description and the code. But for this video, I just wanted to demonstrate how it works so that everyone can make use of it. So you just visit the link in the video description and when you scroll down, you'll see the image that we saw at the beginning of the video and what it looks like after I've run it through each of the models. So that's the image after running it through SR ResNet, and that's the image after running it through SR GAN. If you continue to scroll down, you'll see this button over here under Usage, and it says Open in Colab. So I'll go ahead and click that. Basically, this allows you to run these AI models on Google's hardware without needing to install anything. It might ask you to sign into your Google account, so if it does, go ahead and do that. I'm already logged in, so I don't need to do that. Now, there's something up here that says uncomment and run the lines below if running in Google Colab. Since we're using Google Colab, I'm going to go ahead and uncomment these lines. That means I'm going to remove the hash and space from the beginning of this line and do the same for the line underneath. Then I'll go ahead and run this by hitting Shift Enter on my keyboard or by selecting this play button. There's a warning from Google that pops up telling you that they didn't write this code and that it might be dangerous. You'll get that notification in Google Colab whenever you try to run public code that wasn't written by Google themselves. My code is publicly available for anyone to inspect. You can read it in the previous code repository and I'll go through some of the code in this notebook in more detail later in the video. If anyone has any security concerns, please let me know. I promise I'm not trying to steal any of your information or do anything malicious. So I'll go ahead and click run anyways. If that's all run successfully, you should get the same text output as me, and then you can go ahead and upload the images that you want to enhance. So I'll go ahead and click on the folder icon, and then you should see a bunch of folders and some files. And if you don't see that, you can go ahead and click this refresh button and if you still don't see it, just make sure that you've got the same text output as me. 
To upload the images that you want to enhance, you can go ahead and hover over this input folder, click on these three dots, hit upload, and then find a bunch of images on your computer that you'd like to enhance. I'll go ahead and select all of these and then hit open. This little message tells you that the images will be removed once you disconnect from the session, and that's fine. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now you should see your images inside of this input directory. If you don't see them, just go ahead and click this refresh button over here and make sure that they're not uploading somewhere down here. Since I've managed to upload all of my images, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this cell is selected by clicking on it. And then I'll say run time, run after. While that's running, I'll go ahead and give a quick high level overview of how this code all works. The code in this first cell downloaded the code that was in the GitHub repo that you saw earlier and it extracted it so that we could use it in this Google Colab notebook. This next block of code imports all of the libraries that I plan on using in this notebook. Some that I'll mention are glob, which I use to programmatically find all of the image input files. Another library that I'll mention is TensorFlow, which is a framework that I use for machine learning. So the AI models that we'll use in this video were created using TensorFlow. Those AI models were trained on a dataset called div2k. And in the next cell here, I'm just gathering all of the configurations for that dataset. I'll use these configurations later to configure the architecture of my model. Then I've just created a helper function that will take in an image path and load it into memory in a way that can be used by my TensorFlow model. I've trained two models. One of them is called SRResNet and the other one is called SRGAN. Over here, I've just selected the SRResNet model and you can see that the line for SRGAN is commented out, so it won't be executed. If you want to use SRGAN instead, you just need to comment out the SRResNet line and uncomment the SRGAN line and run everything from this point onwards. I'm going to go ahead and change that back since I'd like to use the SRResNet model. Further down, I create a model key and then I use that to check if I already have a pre-trained model with a matching key. If I don't, then I download some pre-trained weights from my Amazon S3 bucket. After that, I initialize my model architecture and load in the pre-trained weights. I use glob to get a list of all the images in the input directory, and I also create the output directory based on the model key. I run the model on every image in the input directory, and then create an output image inside of the output directory. Obviously, the larger images you use, the longer it will take to process. Finally, I create a zip file for all of those images so that I can download them back to my computer when this is all done. You can also download individual images if you'd like by expanding this output folder, clicking on the three dots, and then saying download. I can go ahead and click save to save the image of the baboon to my desktop. Since I don't want to have to do that for every image, I'll have to wait for all of the code to run. You can see right now that it's busy with this line and it's busy processing the image called man.png. It's just completed man, and now it's busy with zebra. All right, you can see that it's done processing all of the images now, and it's added all of the processed images into a zip file, images.zip. So I should see this file over here, but if I don't, I can go ahead and click this refresh button. And now I can see that this images.zip has appeared. To download it, I'll click on these three dots and say download. And I'll have to wait for the circle to turn completely yellow before I'm able to download it. So I'll go ahead and wait for that. All right, the circle here is almost completely yellow. And any moment now, I should be getting a pop-up to ask me to save the zip file. All right, so I've got that pop-up and I'll go ahead and click save. And now on my desktop, I have a zip file containing all of those images. So I can go ahead and extract these and see a folder of my AI enhanced images over here, which contains some of the images that you saw at the beginning of this video. If you're interested in finding out more about how these AI models work, hit the like button and the subscribe button to keep updated. I'll do a follow-up video on how these models work. If you'd like to learn more about AI, you can visit my website for more AI content. That's AIExpedition.com. If you have any suggestions on any AI models that you'd like to see, leave a comment on my video below. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.